In this presentation, we will discuss fringe benefits. Fringe benefits are important within payroll because in essence, they're going to be a form of payment. They're rewards for services done. However, and that's just like any type of payment, they're rewards for services. However, they're typically going to be non-cash compensation. And when we consider non-cash compensation, the question is, well, do we need to include that in uh, wages, even though we didn't get paid cash, is it still wages? And a big implication of that or a big problem with that or a big concern as to whether it is wages or not is, is it subject to taxes? Is it subject to federal income tax, state income tax, the Social Security and Medicare tax? So that's going to be a big component. Now, there's going to be different reasons and incentives why an employer might want non-cash compensation. They may uh, be providing just just uh, types of benefits through their business for their employees as perks of, of the job that are non-cash uh, compensation. But clearly there's also an incentive to try to plan for non-cash compensation in the areas where it may lead to uh, compensation that cannot be, it wouldn't be taxed. In other words, an employee who who was either to receive cash, which then would have to pay federal income tax, state income tax, Social Security, and Medicare, or was to receive some other kind of fringe benefit, some other type of, uh, in essence, compensation. And even though it's not cash, not as liquid, possibly not as preferable in that for that reason, could still be preferred because if it were not subject to taxes. So that's going to be a, a big issue. Now, of course, most things, if they're going to be something that's just non-cash, doesn't necessarily mean it it's non-taxable. Most things are, in other words. So if someone received some like a car or something for compensation or some other type of um, type of reward that would be a costly type of thing or a vacation or something like that, typically that would still need to be included in income. That's a form of compensation typically subject to uh, taxes on it. So there's questions in terms of where are those limited things possibly that uh, could be received by employees and reduce uh, the payroll tax not need to be included in uh, the payroll. And one's going to be uh, de minimis benefits. And that basically just means small benefits, minimum benefits, small small type of things that if an employer uh, give, gives small fringe benefits. And, you know, you can kind of think of that in terms of accounting terms as something that's immaterial, meaning they're kind of, you're, you're basically saying, we're basically saying they're too small to, man, to matter about. They're not something that uh, when someone goes to work somewhere, they're, they're going to take into consideration as part of their compensation package to influence their decision as to whether to, to go one place or another. So that's one type of fringe benefit we don't typically need to include. Uh, education assistance is often uh, a, a benefit that can be provided by the employer and be a really great way that an employer can give incentives for an employee to continue to, to skill up and uh, improve themselves and show that they you know value the employee and give uh, some tax benefit there if they're able to basically uh, reduce the gross wages because then that could reduce taxes on it. Uh, employee discounts. So, and this is going to be another type of area where if you're in a particular industry and there's discounts, then within uh, within limitations, you can basically apply the discounts and uh, as, a, as a bonus for working in, in certain industries. And of course, certain industries have different types of, of discounts that could be available within that industry. Uh, meals. Uh, meals is going to be something that uh, will, again, within reasoned be determined as to whether it should be uh, calculated as uh, as wages or not. Is it part of uh, travel? Is it part of um, is it for the, basically is it for the benefit of the employer or is it something that's going to be extravagant for um, the employee? Those are going to be some concerns as to whether or not it should be part of um, compensation or not. Moving expenses reimbursements uh, it could be could be something that would be beneficial to the employee and the employer transportation benefits. And again, the, the questions here are whether or not it's, um, it's a benefit to the employer typically or the employee as to whether uh, it needs to be included in, in payroll taxes or not. So we're not gonna get into a lot of detail on the fringe benefits. We're just gonna point out here that there are, uh, there is a concern of course that if wages are typically given in terms of 
uh, cash then or a check or a direct deposit, then there is uh, 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 an incentive for, for companies and employees to try to find compensation in other ways, which possibly or look for ways that would not be included in payroll uh, for compensations that would not be included in payroll taxes to look for those types of things. Now, most things, the default will be that uh, compensation is compensation. And if you get paid in some thing, if you get a car or some other kind of equipment or, or a present or something like that, and if it's over a, a, you know, a certain value, if it's not de minimis in value, then typically we would have to find the fair market value of it and include it as wages. But there are some types of things that uh, could be beneficial, and those are things that um, are, are nice for a company to look into because they can have some uh, advantages in some effect in terms of giving the employee more through these types of compensation, uh, fringe benefit types of compensation. If you're on the payroll, 